Hi, I'm Jeff from Doodle Labs. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view our video on configuring the smart radio for WDSAP client mode or uh, dynamic mesh mode. For AP client mode, uh, which is WDS AP client mode specifically, uh, which is a star topology, we see it here, access point connected to various clients. Um, it does provide higher throughput than mesh because there's no mesh routing overhead. So in a point-to-point in a -point configuration where no mesh is required, this would be advantageous. You'd get probably 10% increase in throughput or so. And an automatic, another advantage, it automatically searches for best channel on startup, and client devices will automatically and dynamically switch to find the access point uh, should the AP change channel. So those are some of the, the advantages there. The drawbacks are there's a single point of failure. There's no... Uh, redundancy and also it cannot extend your, your wireless network beyond line of sight as you could in, in a mesh topology where you could hop uh, beyond line of sight conditions. To configure uh, AP, uh, AP client, WDS AP client mode we go into the simple configuration menu we'll show you how to do that here in a second and then you'd make any, I would recommend making any changes to the radio itself, um, channel, bandwidth, etc. In, in network configuration wireless in, in the wireless settings area. So let's take a look and go ahead and, uh, and navigate to uh, configure this node for WDSAP client. Okay, so I'm already logged into the radios. Let's go ahead and browse to them. So we've got um, browsed here, uh, looking at this radio. Uh, it's an external unit. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look. If you look, scan down, we can see what mode it's in currently. It's in mesh point. So currently the device is in mesh mode. So let's go ahead and we'll make this device the access point, WDS access point. The other device is actually already configured as a client. So I've already done that. So let's go ahead and make the change. What we do is we'll go to uh, out of status. We'll go to configuration. Simple config, and this is where you can change our mode. Um, it shows WDS access point here in the table, but this is really just the very first um, item in the drop down table. We know from our previous look at the, um, at the configurations at the um, status screen that it was in mesh point. So we know this is in mesh mode. Let's go down to WDS access point. We'll leave it there. Apply. And once it configures that, okay, the indicated command uh, executed successfully. We'll go back to simple, go back to our uh, overview screen, and we'll take a look and see just to confirm the mode. And if we go back and look, then it shows up as master. So when it's configured as WDS access point, uh, the mode indication is master. And it's adjacent neighbor, which is the other client node, which is previously configured, is now appearing as an associated station. So that confirms we've got uh, we've got a connection here between the two. Really straightforward. Now, as I indicated, the, the best way if you want to change channels, we know the default channel is channel seven. We can see it here. Um, that's in the center of the band. If we wanted to change channels to avoid interference, find it maybe there's a better channel we saw through uh, spectrum analysis, we can go ahead and, and make those changes. As I said, I'd make those changes under the wireless option, go to network configuration, wireless, and that's where I would make my hope my main changes and we go to uh, edit. And here's the dashboard we can actually make uh, the changes to the radio parameters and if we want to change the frequency away we can change it to uh, let's say channel 11 on the edge of the band let's save and apply When it comes back, the client will follow us um, to channel 11 from the, the current channel, channel 7.
Okay, the configuration change is complete. And let's go back to status and take a look at overview and see where we're at. Great. So uh, we are on channel 11, and as we see, the client's attached and is associated. So um, it's, it's scanned over with us. Well, now let's take a look at Dynamic Mesh. So let's talk about Dynamic Mesh. This is um, Dynamic Mesh is, is an enhanced algorithm, uh, Mesh Rider algorithm, that allows us to implement some key features that we'll talk about. It's um, one of the key features is multi-route by two data redundancy between source and destination nodes. And what that means is a node will generate two data streams redundantly to its two adjacent neighbors on route to the destination. One of the data streams is determined to be the primary based on least cost routing. The other data stream becomes the secondary by default. Should the primary data stream be interrupted, the secondary data stream is packets already present and there'll be zero packet rerouting or failover time to transition from the primary to the secondary. This also eliminates um, single point of failure as well. Multi-route redundancy is also advantageous for roaming, mesh roaming, and mobility, and, and mobility applications. So how to look at it as a mobile node will have, it will generate two connections, one to the node it's adjacent to, one, one, two data streams, one to the node it's adjacent to, and a secondary data stream for the node that it's approaching. Um, the primary data stream will be the, the adjacent node, but as it, as it approaches the uh, the secondary node, as that link becomes better based on least cost routing, a transition will occur and the connection to the, to the approaching node will become the primary. And that will all, all happen with a zero packet loss, zero failover time. In essence, it's a make before break connection. Another advantage of dynamic mesh is the very low network overhead. It's a very, very efficient protocol, which means we can support increased node densities of 200 plus nodes per mesh and throughout the network. Another feature we offer through Dynamic Mesh is dual radio failover. We'll talk a little bit about that, a little more about that uh, here in a moment, but that's a way we can get dual radio, dual link redundancy through Dynamic Mesh. And as I said, this is a license upgrade per node and it's implemented through light, a license key. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the dual radio failover feature in Dynamic Mesh. You basically have two sets of radios that you establish. They can be on the same frequency or different frequencies. In our case here, we have them on different frequencies. On each side of the link, the nodes are connected back to back. And you basically have two streams created, routing packets redundantly between the nodes. There's a primary and a secondary stream that's determined again based on the best route, the best link. Should the primary be interrupted for any reason? Transition to the secondary is seamless, no, no packet loss. So again, for pure redundancy with seamless transitioning, that's the purpose of, of dual radio failover. And now we can describe how to configure you know, dynamic mesh. As it is a license upgrade, uh, you need to upload the key. So the first thing is to you go to um, your advanced network configuration and dynamic mesh and upload the key there, and we'll show you how to do that. Then we'll come back and show you how to configure, transition the node into dynamic mesh mode. Okay, to get to the uh, the licensed um, key upgrade, you go go to advanced settings first. Network configuration. Dynamic Mesh. So what we would do is go to Licenses. Now that we're here, this node already has a license on it, but to go through the procedure, browse to the save location where you've saved the key that we've generated and sent to you. Open the key.
helps if you select it. <laughs> and then you'd upload the license. Since it's already been done, we won't do it redundantly. That'll enable the key on the device. Now we have to enable the dynamic mesh mode transition. So to do that, we'll go back to uh, network configuration. We'll go to simple configuration. Enable dynamic mesh. Apply. Okay, we've executed it successfully. Successful execution. And we'll go to status. Overview. And it should tell us the mode here will be ad hoc. So in dynamic mesh, the mode will indicate ad hoc, not mesh point. There is the difference. So we now have this node established as a dynamic mesh node. Any other node in the system would also have to be enabled with a license key to become part of that dynamic mesh. And that would allow you to implement all those advanced features. Thank you again for taking the time to view our video here on WDSAP client as well as how to transition a node to dynamic mesh as well. Thank you.